Careful, sir. How the hell did you get bitten by a centipede, man? I don't know. Today I just wanted to make a quick video to show you our DIY first aid kit that we carry. So I've put together this ultralight uh, series of gear uh, for the purpose of first aid in the field. So this is where I keep everything inside this. It's an old muesli bag, uh, plastic Ziploc, very waterproof container that I keep all this gear inside. So let's start off with a great simple painkiller that's available at any chemist or supermarket, that's Panadine. So quite often when you're hiking, you can end up with a headache because of dehydration from the changing weather conditions. So we just, we usually have about 10 Panadines actually in the first aid kit. So I'll just have to add a few more soon because we have been using them. Uh, a needle and thread. So not necessarily related to first aid, but it's something that we keep inside the first aid kit. Potentially, if you were gutsy enough, you could use that to stitch up a wound. Not sure if anyone has actually done that and how much pain they actually experienced if they did. <laughs> so this is a uh, 240 litre garbage bag. So I've just got it wrapped up nice and tight. A lot of people I know carry space blankets, so I decided not to use space blankets. So I, th I think you can achieve almost the same thing with a garbage bag. So a 240 litre garbage bag is about 150 centimetres long, so it's a very large bag. So in an emergency you could get inside the bag. Uh, some cotton, cotton wool, just for treating wounds. We only have one band-aid at the moment in this pack, but we also have these post-op post band-aids, uh, band so stick-on uh, band-aids band to stop bleeding. Particularly useful for leech bite actually, so I'll just hold it up to the camera so you can see it. They, they're expensive though, they cost about two or three dollars each at the chemist. So if you get one that's large enough, you could probably almost patch up a bullet wound with these post-op bandages. Uh, along with the needle and thread, we uh, nowadays we're carrying a thimble. So if you have to push the needle through a very hard uh, piece of fabric, such as leather, you, know, you can have a lot more uh, force pushing the needle through. We also carry vitamin C. I would highly recommend this um, for anyone bushwalking to add to your first aid kit because um, lack of vitamin C can cause a lot of sicknesses and also some ailments can be kind of treated uh, with vitamin C. So we are also carrying two bandages. So they're cotton bandages. I think each one is about two or three meters long. So what's that? That's probably uh, 10 centimeters wide almost back over there and another thing I like to carry on in my first aid kit uh, are earplugs so obviously earplugs are not related to treatment of ailments but um, I like to carry them because when you are camped next to a river and you may have noticed from our videos that we always camp near creeks usually uh, the river can be quite loud so it's difficult to get a good night's sleep without the earplugs in also the sound of animals uh, moving around during the night can be uh, quite annoying, can wake you up. So I'm not sure if, if you're living in an area of America where there are grizzly bears walking around, you might not feel comfortable sleeping with earplugs in because you might want to be able to hear those animals sneaking up on you, sneaking up on your campsite. But in Australia, um, the only animals that, well in my state of Victoria, the only animals that make a lot of noise at night are usually either kangaroos, possums, um, and sometimes feral cats can be a bit noisy at night, so it guarantees you a very good night's sleep with earplugs on. So another item that's related to bandages and uh, dressing wounds, we also carry uh, one lady's san sanitary napkin. So obviously it's designed to stop blood flow, so you could unfold that and use it to treat a wound that was bleeding quite effectively. Um, at the moment, lately, we've been carrying a couple of surgical gloves. 
So a couple of uh, latex surgical gloves. So one trick you can use with these is if you are in wet conditions and, and your regular woolen gloves are saturated, what you can do is put your hand inside the surgical glove and then, and then put, after that, put your hand inside your woolen glove. And even if the woolen gloves are wet, your hands will remain warm because you're wearing the rubber gloves. And believe it or not, your hands can remain quite warm um, with only the latex rubber gloves. Um, I'm not sure if they actually are latex, but surgical gloves, call them what you like, disposable gloves. You can buy them by the hundred in a box at the supermarket. And also we, we just thought we'd add them in um, because the whole, the whole kit is related to first aid. So that just about covers everything in the first aid kit. We'll just come in again, a bit of a close up. And over on the side here, I've got a few items that are in our backpack also, which could be used in first aid situations. So that's a bit of uh, alcohol hand sanitizer. So you could use that to sterilize wounds. Uh, so it's a, like a cleaning alcohol that you use to clean your hands. Uh, the, the good old Swiss Champ, Swiss Army pocket knife. Definitely one of my most favorite bits of kit, actually. Uh, so obviously the scissors could be used um, while you were assisting in the uh, treatment of wounds and using uh, the needle and thread, for example, which is over there, of course. So things that everyone's going to have in their, in their bag is obviously you might have some rope. That could be used to make a tourniquet and uh, gorilla tape or duct tape. So I think realistically you don't you know, necessarily need bandages to stop uh, bleeding. You could always use a piece of cotton clothing and just use duct tape. So plenty of people out there have made their own band-aids band in emergency situations. It has been done and it can be done. So I'm not a doctor or a nurse, so any medical practitioners out there watching this might think, no, you should add this and you should add that. Well, this is basically just a, a series of lightweight gear that I've put together and that I carry and that I know will be useful um, quite often based on hundreds of hikes that I've been on. Just got the camera back on the tripod again. Just wanted to show you how it all packed up. We keep the first aid kit towards the top of the backpack where it can be easily accessed in an emergency. Larger items like sleeping bags and tents we keep at the bottom of the backpack because they should only be needed at the end of the day.